Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We know you're busy and we know there's a lot going on these days. And that's also exactly why this webinar is going to be so valuable. It has a lot of potential to help you and your organization spend less time doing things that we have the technology to improve. It's really exciting, but I'm getting my head ahead of myself a little bit. Uh, we promise to be, we just promise to be good stewards of your time. We've got a lot to cover today, and we're gonna get right into it after I quickly cover a few housekeeping items. This webinar is being recorded, and you will receive a link in the follow-up email tomorrow afternoon. Also in that email will be a link to the survey. The survey will also pop up at the end of the webinar, but in case you have to jump at some point, it will also be in the email. The survey is super quick, and you'll have two chances to fill it out. It really helps me and the rest of the Mutually Human team know how we can improve these learning sessions. It also helps us get the ball rolling should you connect with this material and want to move forward with improving your processes. There is also a giveaway raffle for some $50 and $100 Amazon gift cards. Filling out the survey enters in to win for those. And we'd also like to send you a small thank you gift from us and our partners at Automation Anywhere for attending the webinar. It's a cool little Yeti tumbler, so please let us know if we can send you one of those uh, as a thank you for your time. I am Logan White. I'm the marketing manager here at Mutually Human. But much more importantly, I am joined by two tech experts. We have Lori Maxson, who is our VP of Custom Software, and Nav Lakey, who is our Director of Intelligent Automation. And just to set the table a bit, we're going to be talking about a technology that everyone has a love-hate relationship with, spreadsheets. Um, we see a lot of businesses using them as a tool to get a wide variety of processes off the ground. And they're a great way to organize and execute processes and store data, but they're often only good to a point. They're very manual, prone to errors and breakage, and it's tough sometimes to know how and when to move on. Um, what's, what's, really you can, uh, what's really unique about us at Mutually Human, something I'm really excited about, is that we specialize in a variety of tools capable of solving processes and process problems like these. And depending on your process, we can employ one or, se or several of these tools in the absolute most optimal capacity for your priorities and goals. And uh, just love that. Up first, to talk to you about one of those tools and uh, the power of fully custom software is Lori Maxson. Lori will be sharing insights with you on exactly how fully custom software is unlocking new capabilities uh, and dramatically increasing efficiency for spreadsheet dependent operations. Lori has led many, many custom software projects here at Mutually Human, and there is truly no one better to give you a rundown on what's happening out there and also our capabilities. Lori. Oop, Lori, are you there? Yes, thank you, Logan. I, I love that you said um, no one better. I'm, I'm extremely flattered there. <laughs> um, so as, as Logan mentioned, I'm Lori Maxson, VP of Custom Software here at Mutually Human. I come by way of this through UX and UI design, so a lot of my focus tends to be helping organizations who have an idea or a vision and help them craft that into something that's a real piece of software for their customer or for their internal team to use. So like Logan said, we're really excited to have you here today um, with us. We know everyone's time is very precious, so I am going to jump right in. <laughs> There are a variety of different types of software when organizations come to us that they're using to run their business. So just give you a little context first of, of what we typically see out there in, in the market. Um, so first is commercial off-the-shelf software. So this is software that's built for the mass market. It can be purchased by the general public. So things like Microsoft Suite and QuickBooks, Zoom, Slack, those types of things, very common for organizations to use multiple different versions of off-the-shelf software within their business. Another type is modified off-the-shelf software. So this is software that can be modified or customized fairly heavily after you purchase the software from a software vendor. Custom software, we describe custom software as software that's designed and developed specifically for your unique business needs. So as opposed to the first two that I just mentioned, custom software is really developed specifically for your organization, for your custom process, and for your users, whether those users are internal um, employees or external customers. And you'll often see organization using some combination of these different types of software, right? So as businesses acquire more and more tools to run their business, the thing that we've seen is that it can also introduce a new problem of not having those different types of software connected. 
So we've, we've seen a lot of value in building software that provides integrations for those different systems. And another way that we've, we've worked with organizations to help easily pull data in and out is intelligent automation, which now we'll talk to you a little bit more in a few minutes. So different types of software that we see um, organizations using to run their business. Today, our focus is spreadsheets and more specifically, when to stop using spreadsheets. So um, like, like Logan mentioned, I've been in the software industry for over 15 years now. And something we see quite a bit are organizations who are operating a business without the right tools in place to help them accomplish their goals. Um, and over the last few years, we've seen workforce transformation. So organizations are continuing to change the way they operate. Right, with more and more of this remote work, we're, we're communicating differently with our teams, we're communicating differently with our customers, and this has started to make it even more important to have the right tools in place to support your operations, to provide quality service to your customer, and really to do more with less. So we've worked with a lot of companies to essentially turn spreadsheets into a web and mobile application, and that's what we're excited to share more about with you today. Um, organizations have have often made it a long way and and honestly they've done amazing things in spreadsheets we are we are often impressed with how people can build and create very complex spreadsheets that are that are doing a lot of powerful actions for their company but we've also worked with a lot of organizations that have begun to feel the growing pains and the limitations of those spreadsheets so focusing on a few of the common pains that we see when organizations are using spreadsheets to run different aspects of their business. So the first one here is spreadsheets can be very inefficient. I have a couple case studies I'll share with you in a bit, but things that we've seen here are things like duplicate data entry. Um, it can also be very time consuming to get information in and out of spreadsheets. This tends to make monitoring or reporting really challenging. Spreadsheets also tend to lack integration with other business software. So we talked a little bit about how many organizations are using those different types of software to run their business. And so having software that can connect together and get information in and out of the different tools is becoming more and more important. Second, spreadsheets lack structure. So what do I mean by that? A couple things we see here. So one, they lack the standardization of process. So since spreadsheets can be very flexible, which in, in the infancy of using a spreadsheet, that tends to be one of the advantages of a spreadsheet. But because of that flexibility, different employees will use the tool in different ways. We worked with an organization that was using spreadsheets to track the status and collecting data across some of their different projects. And when we audited all those spreadsheets, we found an enormous amount of variations of how each of the spreadsheet, each of the employees were using those spreadsheets to track the, the different projects. Um, this made the data very inconsistent, um, and it caused a lot of challenges within their organization. Also, so that you know, lack of standardization of process is something that we're really working hard to help companies that are using spreadsheets and moving into that app world solve. Next, uh, they're, they're really prone to errors. So you can do you can do things, and we see a lot of a lot of people doing things like color coding cells where data should be entered within a spreadsheet or locking certain access down. But in general, spreadsheets we've found seem to amplify the possibility of human error. Um, we see a lot of companies that are struggling with, with inaccuracy coming out of using spreadsheets to do things like quoting or project management or you name it. They also lack security and, and have a, a limited audit trail. So think, um, companies where, that are prioritizing some of the security aspects, um, there's a lot more advantage in the application world that can be um, a protective element there you know spreadsheets can be disseminated to anyone anytime um, and so that that's something that we can control within the custom software world and third group here spreadsheets can be hard to use they they don't usually start out off that way i would say though they usually start off fairly simple fairly straightforward but what we've seen is they tend to grow and they grow with more reference data they start growing with pivot tables additional tabs and they start to become really large and cumbersome and they begin to not be optimal especially when you have multiple people inputting information trying to access information simultaneously and you know we talked about workforce transformation and the different ways that we're communicating and the different ways that we're working and in today's remote and on the go workforce relying heavily on spreadsheets can be really difficult they're not optimal for remote use they're not optimal for mobile use 
So there, there's a there's a range of pains and different challenges people face based on what they're trying to accomplish with spreadsheets, but these are the big three that we tend to see over and over. Basically, spreadsheets work great until they don't work great anymore. And so if we have any Mel Brooks fans in the audience, we like to joke about spreadsheets almost um, remind us of the scene in the movie High Anxiety where this chauffeur is trying to help Mel Brooks load up his luggage and he essentially picks up this giant trunk and he says, I got it, I got it, I got it. And when he gets to the top of, of holding this trunk, he drops it to the ground and says, ah, I don't got it. And spreadsheets feel really similar. They start off working. They start off, I got it, I got it, I got it. They're, and then they it gets to a point where spreadsheets no longer do the job. And it does feel like it kind of, it comes crashing down just like this trunk. I don't got it anymore. Um, and I think the trick with recognizing when to take a spreadsheet and transition it into a more elegant technical solution is really recognizing the right time to make that change and start to invest in something that will evolve as your business needs grow and change. So here's a couple case studies that sort of reflect that same that same thought. These are these are all based on real projects. I've changed some of the company names just to protect any proprietary information. I think these are really good concepts to show how it, organizations have started using a spreadsheet and when it was no longer working and they were outgrowing the spreadsheet, investing in custom software. So we'll, we'll look at a quoting system. Uh, project tracking with some dashboards and data collection and content access for a travel agency. So first one here is a company um, called ED Design. This is an interior design company and, and basically they specialize in helping homeowners remodel and redesign the interior of their homes. The, their sales process that they had um, established, one of the things they offer is this free design session where a designer would come into your home, walk through with you, talk talk to the homeowner about things they would like to change, and a designer would give ideas for modifications. One of the big business challenges they were facing was the conversion rate from those free design sessions to actual sales was very low. So they were spending a lot of time sending their designers on these visits. And they tracked that back to the fact that designers were not really providing ideas to the homeowner that were in a reasonable range for what the homeowner was willing to spend. So here's Edie, um, owner of Edie Design, and Edie describes the challenge of her organization was, was facing. She basically talks about that clients would often not have a clear understanding of the cost of their, ser of their services. And Edie and her team would waste a lot of time creating um, estimates for customers that really weren't ready to um, move forward with a sale. So they needed something that was easy enough to use while they were actually there at the home interacting with, with the customer. This would allow them to start to give real-time budget information back um, and start to facilitate a conversation to narrow in a little bit more on budget and needs with the customer. So let me read you this last section from Edie. I was using spreadsheets to input things like dimensions, material costs, et cetera, in order to build an estimate. It was time consuming and the presentation to the client wasn't very impressive. So let's look at where we ended up with ED Design. So turning, turning their spreadsheet into an application gave them many advantages. Um, now the sales reps and leadership can go in and they can view a list of all the quotes that they have active. They can sort them, filter them based on whatever they're looking for. Maybe they're looking at filtering them by salesperson or by status. Users can now easily input that data. So by users, I mean the sales, the sales team could input the data and view the total costs and quantity with the calculations. So they can start viewing that, they can start having that conversation with the homeowner, and they can make adjustments on the spot to guide that customer through selecting options that are maybe low, medium, and premium cost. So again, just continuing to facilitate a conversation so that in the end, the final quote presentation back to the customer is more in line with the budget and the needs of the homeowner. The other thing that this app allows them to do is give customers links to online quotes with approval options and online signatures to keep the process moving and present their service and their quote in a very professional way. Next up is another spreadsheet to application. This one focuses on workflow management. So the problem out there in the market, creative agencies, um, awards are a really important part of marketing their service and gaining notoriety, notoriety, but finding the right award show and submitting work is a very time consuming process. So 
Award Hero is a new service created to manage that process for these different creative agencies. Basically, when Award Hero first started, they had a very limited number of customers and a very limited number of award shows that they were managing. So what they were doing is they were creating a spreadsheet for each award show that they were submitting work for, and then they would add rows for each customer submission that they were submitting for that those individual award shows. They would track that submission process through, did we collect all the information we need? Do we have the visuals in place? Has the work been submitted? Did we receive um, results from the award show, things like that. And it worked really well for a while when they were when they were doing 10 or 20 award shows, that system was was a great fit for them. But they continued to grow and they started submitting to hundreds of award shows with and so they each had those their each their own spreadsheet. And as they continued to grow, customers would also have multiple entries not only in a single award show but across many award shows which as you can imagine, if a customer called and said, hey, can you send me a list of all the awards that you're submitting on my behalf? Essentially what award hero managers would have to do is open every single uh, one of those hundred spreadsheets and pull the customer data to be able to provide that report back to the customer. So a lot of challenges that they were facing there. This is Jackson, director of award submission. So he essentially describes how spreadsheets worked um, really well at first. They were they were doing you know 10 or 20 shows, um, but as they grew, that process just did not scale well. Um, so one part I'd like to read here from Jackson is, in addition, each submission manager started creating their own version of the spreadsheet for the shows that they were managing. Um, so this is a big challenge we continue to see. So again, when we went through and audited all their spreadsheets, we found a lot of inconsistencies in the way each manager was tracking those different projects. It, it got so bad that if one manager was going out on vacation, they'd actually have to train their backup on how they had their spreadsheet set up to work. Um, so as you can imagine, there's a lot of challenges and inconsistencies in that process. Translating that um, large group of spreadsheets into a custom web application, um, now they have software that's tailored specifically supporting their unique process. They track submissions with a consistent process. This now is allowing that department to do more with less managers because it's made the process so easy. It's made it easy to transfer workloads and to be able to back up and share and really maximize um, the productivity of each manager that's, that's running some of these submissions. They're easily able to view data by award shows or by client. So this is the big part of making um, it easier to provide better reports and communications to their clients now so they can say um, here's how many different award shows that we're submitting to here's how many submissions that you've received um, gold or silver or whatever their results have been and being able to surface dashboards that are real time they can go in and start to identify trends and start to maximize results and once they see different types of awards yielding more results in different shows, they can use that information to continue to help their customers receive the maximum amount of, amount of awards that they, can, that they can get for their business. Next up is a travel agency called TravU. Um, they pride themselves on never suggesting a trip that they haven't fully vetted themselves. So in order to do this, what they do is travel agents go to the resorts, they go to cruises, and they collect all this information and record experiences. So Sounds like a job I'm, I'm going to apply to at some, at some point because it sounds amazing. But in the past, what would happen is an agent would go on this trip and they would take a bunch of photos, they would take handwritten notes, and when they returned to the office, they'd go and log all of this data into an Excel spreadsheet. This is Tina, Director of Agency Operations. So she describes the challenges that they were facing here. Um, essentially, they had so much content. As Tina mentions, they, they had tabs and tabs of content. Um, what was supposed to be a robust library of information that would allow travel agents to um, go through and suggest the perfect trip to, to a family or to, to a person ended up being a big cumbersome um, amount of data. And what happened was is agents just started to suggest their three fa favorite trips over and over again. And this wasn't aligning with the vision. They were really proud of wanting to deliver a very personalized um, trip for each of their customers. And so this became a challenge in, in meeting the competitive advantage that they had set out to meet. 
And as Tina describes here, um, collecting and inputting the information was very disorganized and tedious for our travel explorers. So when they went out to those different locations, they weren't, weren't really able to collect it in a way that was efficient. So creating a, a responsive web and mobile application for TravView here um, gave them back some of that competitive edge that they were seeking to provide to the market. So now travel agents, they can they can go in, they can easily view a list of the trips that they have, both in all different stages, like evaluation, re reviewed, approved, and travel agents can capture all this information in real time, real time rate from their devices while they're there. So if they're there exploring a pool, they can go in, I can add a picture, I can answer some questions, and that all that information is saved directly to the database for that resort. So now they have this really organized database of content. Their agents are able to share, share real information and photos with their client. And they may even evolve into um, considering publishing this library in a way that allows individual tra travelers to potentially join and have access to this information, which would be exciting because it would start to generate an additional revenue stream for their organization now that they have a built up um, set of content that's really valuable for the market. Those are three three examples of spreadsheets to application and some of the benefits that we've seen. But honestly, this sounds kind of cheesy, but the the possible use cases are, are are endless. We've seen you know quoting and estimation, process workflow, dashboards, inventory management, you know all, all kinds of different challenges that we're solving. And essentially, if it can be done in a spreadsheet, we believe it can be done better in an application. Um, and so how do you make that decision? What, when, when do you decide spreadsheet versus custom software? Because honestly, there, there are still times where spreadsheet is a better solution for your organization. So, so when we look at spreadsheets, a couple of things um, tend to be true for, for areas where that's a better solution. One is if you're not ready to make an investment. Spreadsheets are a very low cost tool, right? You can do a lot with them. Second, if you're still making a lot of major changes with your process, um, this, like I said, this flexibility of spreadsheets tends to be its biggest advantage. So by the time organizations have typically tried and outgrown spreadsheets, it's pretty common. They've worked through a lot of the bugs of their process and they've gotten to a point where they're, they're pretty sure that the way they're capturing data or the way they're um, performing these calculations um, is, is pretty close to their ideal situation. And third volume, if, if your volume is low, it's likely not worth an investment, right? If you're, if you're doing three quotes a year, you probably don't need custom software to support that, but as the volume increases, it can start to be very, very valuable. So on the flip side of that, when custom software starts to really outshine a spreadsheet, again, scale is a big component, right? We've talked a lot about that a few times throughout this presentation. And if you're feeling any of those pain points I mentioned earlier with the inefficiency and in inaccuracy, essentially if spreadsheets have gotten to a point where they're causing more pain than value, custom software can start to step in and in general, custom software tends to shine when it's built for a unique market or a unique business need. Um, you know, there's a lot of that commercial off-the-shelf software that we mentioned, and, and for some business functions, that's really the right choice. Where custom software starts to be important is when you're trying to gain a competitive advantage in the way that you provide your product or your service to your customers, or the way that your employees are able to provide that service with an efficient tool for in-house use. So I would say that the, the next one, I gotta go back one. Um, this is usually the biggest burning question for most people I would say is, is what does it cost? Right, how much does it cost to replace my spreadsheet with an application? Um, unfortunately, there's not, there's not a easy way to answer this until we explore deeper into the specific needs and the complexity of the application that we'd be building. But for reference, I can give you a few, a few data points. Um, so this is a visual that shows the approximate value of where many projects have fallen over the years. And you can see there's a big group that are in that tens of thousands of dollars range on the left side of the scale there. If an operation is working pretty well in a spreadsheet, it's, it's likely it's gonna be able to fall into that range, at least for the initial version of that application. There's also many projects that will fall into that hundreds of thousands of dollars in terms of investment. And these are applications that tend to start to support various needs across the, op across the organization. And, there's projects that have been you know upwards in that 600 and, and 1 million plus and those are typically projects that last many years they're supporting multiple platforms and they often include you know numerous and complex integrations so the important thing here is that almost every project almost every goal that you have has a version of creating an application that's on the far left side of the scale 
we work really hard to help companies find that most impactful starting point for investing in custom software. And then as your organization starts to see our return on investment, and as you continue to invent, invest and enhance the application, it can grow as your business needs evolve. Um, so you, it doesn't mean you have to set out spending a million dollars. We can start off finding that really impactful starting point on the left side of the scale there to really help meet your needs. So last thing here is my, my tiniest little sales and marketing plug um, is, you know, if, if after this you're still not really sure if, if your organization is ready to go from spreadsheet to application, um, one thing we offer is a free free consultation. So, you know, we, we love to talk about process. We love to see some of the creative ways people have engineered spreadsheets to support their business. And so what we do for this free consultation is we set up about an hour or two and give you an overview. Um, we look, look for you to give it give an overview of your organization, your goals, and give us a little two or through your spreadsheet or um, description of how you're using your spreadsheet. And what our team will do is return with ideas and possibilities of how something like your spreadsheet could translate into an application and see if that's something that you're interested in pursuing to reach your, your business goals. So with that, I will hand it back over to Logan. Great, Lori, thank you. It's, uh, it's interesting how effective Excel can be with data storage and organization, you know, but to, uh, to really take advantage of that data, at any large scale, it needs help. That doesn't do you any good if you can't use it, how you wanna use it. Um, yeah, next, ooh, one reminder quickly. If you have any questions for Lori, um, please enter them in the chat and we will have a quick Q&A uh, session at the end where we go through those. Um, yeah, um, up next we have Nav Lakey, who is our Director of Intelligent Automation. He's here to talk to you about a really cool tool some of you might be somewhat familiar with, robotic process automation. I won't give you too many spoilers, but we've been seeing RPA have just huge effects for companies who are a little hamstrung by Excel. It's a really great fit um, for this technology. Not as about as many years of experience in RPA as you can have, given how new this technology is, um, and has led, he's been doing it for about six years now, and he's led teams in multiple platforms uh, from different vendors and leads our Automation Anywhere RPA team at, here at Mutual Human. Nava successfully helped deliver automations and establish centers of excellence for clients across industries, including logistics, uh, you know, BFSI, workforce management. Um, yeah, welcome. Welcome, Nav. Thank you, Logan, and uh, appreciate everyone taking the time to be with us today. Who do you have? Trying to go forward on these slides here. Oh, all right, all right, there we go. So uh, once again, thanks everyone for joining and to st set the stage for my presentation today, I wanted to talk through some of the defining eras of transformation in the workplace, right? So if you take a look back 20 years or so, uh, really marked the beginning of the IT transformation era, right? Organiza organizations uh, started standing up their own IT departments and start building some governance around them. Uh, and there was a focus on virtualization and cloud computing, uh, which really helped kick off the next era in the 2010s, which is the digital transformation era, right? This is where businesses started shifting their strategy to be more engaging with customers and focus on security and SaaS products and uh, focus on big data and other social engagement. And then now that leads us to today, where the focus has been shifted even more to focus on the employee workforce. Uh, and this is how companies have been focusing on how they can set their internal teams up for success. And I think the pandemic has really accelerated this new space, right? Remote work and putting the right tools into employees' hands um, has enabled us to work differently now. And this is where technologies like RPA really shine. And today I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about RPA and how it can enable workforce transformation uh, by automating business processes, especially the low hanging fruit of the bunch that involve a lot of manual work in Excel and other spreadsheets. So before I tell you what RPA is, uh, I wanted to get one thing out of the way and tell you what RPA is not. Robotic process automation 
is not a technology that builds or implements physical robots. Uh, when I first tell people I help make bots for a living, they immediately assume I'm building the Terminator or C-3PO, and I assure you that's not the case. You know, even in today, uh, across many industries, physical robots and machines, automated machines, are used to automate a lot of processes, whether it's manufacturing procedures or bring efficiencies to supply chains. Uh, RPA is a little bit different. So what is RPA? Robotic process automation is a software technology that makes it easy to build, deploy, and manage software robots and what these robots do is they mimic human actions performed on various digital systems and software on a computer. So we use tools like Automation Anywhere, which is one of the leaders in the RPA space, and I'll get into a little bit more a few slides from now. So we use tools like Automation Anywhere to build out uh, these bots, right? And just like people, these bots can do things like understand what's on a screen, complete the right keystrokes, uh, navigate different systems, identify, extract, and manipulate data in Excel, and perform a wide range of other defined actions. Uh, but the cool thing about these bots is, is that they run completely on their own and acting as your digital workers, right? They get, the they get the work done quicker and they give humans back their most valued asset, which is time. Oh, and these bots can do all of this without the need to get up and stretch, uh, use the bathroom, or even take a coffee break. So before I get into the benefits of RPA, I think it would be helpful for you guys to see what a bot looks like in action. So for this short demo, um, imagine you've captured some customer information and you need to enter that customer information into a web portal, right? This video will show exactly that. It's about 30 seconds long and it shows that information is being entered into this web portal from an Excel spreadsheet. So I go ahead and start it off now. So now you see the bot running, it's grabbing that information from an Excel spreadsheet and entering it all into this web portal very quickly. So on top of you know, getting this work done as quick as you're seeing it on the screen here, it's doing it accurately and it's not requiring any manual entry, right? Uh, you know, for a handful of records here, it looks pretty manageable to do manually. It's like 10 records. But Im now imagine this, you know, imagine doing the same process for hundreds or even thousands of customers. It would be a very time consuming task, which is where RPA can really help. All right. So benefits of RPA, right? I've mentioned some of the benefits of RPA, but quickly wanted to share some other uh, often overlooked benefits. Uh, the most noticeable benefit of RPA solutions is the speed at which automations can complete tasks, which you were just able to see now. Uh, incorrect data entry is also another challenge for many businesses, and RPA can really help alleviate any of those errors, which can be common when manually uh, performing certain tasks. Uh, another benefit is greater productivity. Uh, whereas humans have limitations on how much work they can do, uh, robots do not. I've actually been part of projects where we've had bots execute key business processes for 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Uh, certain processes can also see an overload of volume certain times of the year, and RPA really allows you to scale up your solutions easily and effectively. Uh, cost savings and fast ROI are no-brainers when it comes to benefits, right? RPA solutions, as you've seen, uh, save time, and oftentimes time does equal money. And ultimately by giving back uh, time to your employees, you're making them feel more valued, right? And allowing them to do work that keeps their focus on human centric tasks and away from the manual repetitive mundane nature of a lot of tasks. Uh, that demo that I just shared actually remind, you know, reminds me of a project that I delivered on uh, some years ago where a client had just recently made an acquisition of a key competitor. Uh, they had an SLA of just a few weeks to get all of their acquisitions, customer info, uh, all given to them in dozens of massive Excel spreadsheets into the client's database. And the way they were entering this customer information in to the database was through A, a web portal, and B, a legacy AS400 system. So feeling the pressure, 
they immediately put a handful of these summer interns uh, to work. And all these poor kids were doing was looking at these Excel, Excel spreadsheets on one screen and manually entering them into those systems that are mentioned on another screen. Uh, this is not only time consuming, obviously, but it was also an extremely error prone process, which you, know, you don't want to lose some of that key customer information. And not to mention, it was a huge waste of time for these interns who you know, should have instead been learning about the business, right? Um, and we were brought on at that point to put out that fire and we built two bots that, that ran 24 seven and finished the process in the allotted time meeting the SLA. So that's the one example of where automation uh, tools like RPA really shine. So I also wanted to talk about automation anywhere. We've built a key uh, and strategic partnership with AA. So um, some of you may have heard of Automation Anywhere or some other RPA tools, um, but there are a few reasons that we've strategically started uh, this partnership with AA. Uh, first reason is we believe it's the easiest of all the RPA tools to use. Uh, I've personally worked with other RPA tools and with AA, uh, the, its simplicity is the real strength especially when considering creating a goal of building out a culture of automation. It's also the only cloud native uh, web-based platform in the world, uh, making scalability a real possibility as opposed to just a pipe dream. And just to throw some other numbers at you guys, uh, Automation Anywhere is also, uh, they've deployed over 3 million bots across 90 countries. So you can really see uh, the effect and the scale at which this, this technology is being adopted. So earlier, uh, I think Lori did a great job of going through some of the challenges of Excel, uh, but I think this Twitter meme from just a few days ago also sums up the pain points of Excel nicely. There just has to be a better way to work with data, especially in Excel, right? So how can Excel, uh, arguably the MVP or the champion in storing and organizing and manipulating data become even more efficient and productive than it is already? This is where RPA tools do a great job uh, of enabling technical and business users alike to make Excel processing much more tolerable. And although Excel is easy to use and highly popular, it isn't always user-friendly and can even be difficult uh, to use when interacting with other systems. Uh, Lori also dove into this a little bit. Uh, and also to automate tasks within Excel, uh, it really requires a user to be proficient in Visual Basic for creating uh, macros. Um, with tools like Automation Anywhere, we can use recording functionality to uh, process those steps manually and then build out a bot right then and there. So it doesn't require much technical skill at all. Just um, some comfortability with the tool itself. So I want to show you uh, another demo here. And for this example, uh, let's pretend we're working as an executive assistant to uh, a sales organization. And one of our tasks uh, each quarter is to calculate the team members of sales bonuses and get that over to HR to create bonus checks. So, you know, imagine we have pretty well structured data um, with the one decision point uh, being a cheat sheet that's going to be pulled up here that shows uh, the salesperson's bonus payout based on the percentage um, of their quarterly goal achieved. And here's the cheat sheet. So the process is kicked off when the sales director emails a list of sales team members and asks them uh, that we calculate the bonus based on the percentage of the quarterly numbers uh, goal that was met. And then we save the attachment out of an email to our desktop so we can work on it. We also open up another system which tracks each individual's quarterly projections along with the actual uh, numbers. And you'll see that here in a second. And then we'll use uh, that to populate the spreadsheet. So now we've you know, been doing this for a while, right? So we've already configured uh, a few things to make this process easier on ourselves. So we pull up the Excel and in 
column G, uh, we need to calculate the percentage of the team uh, members goals that was reached, which we'll use to calculate the final payout based on the data that's in the cheat sheet. So we've set ourselves up with a formula in that column to do the calculation for us. And that makes our job easier as we now only require three pieces of information, the quarterly goal, the quarterly actual, and then the payout based on that percentage. And there's a formula you can see there. So, um, you know, if we're really into formulas, we might even write a switch statement to make that calculation in column, for, uh, column H for us as well. Uh, then we only need two pieces of information. Uh, and to obtain that info, we need to go to our sales totals page and enter the employee's username as well as the quarter we're working in. Uh, we then receive the quarterly goal, uh, which that employee negotiated with his or her manager and their actual sales for that quarter. And when we plug that information into our spreadsheet, we automatically get the achievement percentage in column G. Now we just need to calculate the final payout uh, which begins at 10% of our quarterly goal and scales down based on the percentage of that goal actually achieved. And once we're done with this, we save the spreadsheet and then send it to HR, uh, make sure we CC any key stakeholders and let them know that the task is complete. So to do this across the handful of examples we have here is definitely going to take some time, right? Uh, but there's also and there's also the potential that when manually calculating these payouts that we can make an error and then the wrong check amount goes out, which nobody wants. I will probably have to go back through and double check and perform additional validations uh, just to be thorough. And that also takes up a lot of uh, manual effort and time. So you'll see the bot run here uh, in a couple minutes, but we did manually uh, perform this process for 20 sales folks. And we counted that it took just about seven or eight minutes uh, with uh, a handful of uh, fat finger mistakes on the calculator. And you know, imagine if your sales team has been uh, scaled up to no, not 20, but 50 or 100 or even several hundred, uh, you don't want any of those errors to be in place, right? But alternatively, Automation Anywhere can quickly and easily automate the entire process for us not only freeing us up that time to concentrate on more value added tasks, but removing the possibility of human error. And you're gonna see the bot run here in a second. Uh, the automation will pull the attachment from our email, save it on the desktop, overwrite the file that already exists, and then it'll open the calculator site and cycle through each team member's filing in the spreadsheet for us. And we have a timer here to show you how long it's gonna take compared to the seven minutes that it manually took. And for demo purposes, this process was slowed down a bit. So we can see the automation in action. And we're gonna run it once like this. So you're seeing now this is all being done by the bot, including all of the calculations. And I do wanna note, this is a relatively simple process when it comes to complexity. Uh, however, Automation Anywhere is powerful enough where it has the ability to manipulate complex logic and other processing that's performed in Excel. So I think we're running it once more. And this time you'll see it running much quicker. So now this is what it would look like if it was running in a production setting without any delays. And you'll just see it, the speed and accuracy at which it's performing. So even doing it without the delays is 50% faster than it was with those manual delays in place, right? So hopefully this demo gives you a good idea of how Automation Anywhere interacts with Excel spreadsheets. Right, and, and like I said, I wanna echo this again, is this was a simple process. We've done, you know, we've handled uh, and built bots for processes that are much more complex, involve much more logic, that involve multiple spreadsheets, and uh, you know, even the ability to integrate those spreadsheets with third-party applications or other internal websites and emails.
So now, what can Excel Automation do for you? Right, a user-friendly experience. Uh, the functionality of Excel Automation does a lot of the dirty work, right? You can update the values, format cells, run macros, and users don't get bogged down in these details and can instead focus on the tasks and uh, that are require more human-centric decision-making. And speaking of decision-making, uh, Excel Automation can help make you more informed decisions, right? It allows users to transfer desired information uh, from spreadsheets and potentially create dashboards and uh, really uh, integrate analytics into how your spreadsheet numbers are visually displayed. Uh, automating Excel processes is the key to integrating spreadsheets and their data into any enterprise system, whether it's SAP or Salesforce, uh, uploading and integrating the data from those applications with Excel spreadsheets using Automation Anywhere is done very easily. Uh, users can also share uh, data uh, across any Excel file type, whether it's XLS or XLSM, which are Excel files with, VB, with the VBA macros, and even CSV files. Excel Automation can also encrypt the data, compress it, and, make sh and transfer it to others uh, making sure that you're meeting all in all in any internal protocols. Uh, users often make small errors when transferring data between spreadsheets. We've, you know, we've, that's been uh, displayed in that demo. Uh, and those small errors can snowball into larger ones, right? And that can negatively, negatively affect the business and negatively affect any employees in the case of the, the demo that I showed. Uh, RPA is also is you know it's developed in a way that it can be implemented with minimal disruption to any company's processes. Teams can continue uh, to work with the technologies that they're used to, while the RPA platform can be integrated and upgraded, handling those processes seamlessly. So uh, now that we've gone through a handful of use cases and examples, I wanted to quickly share this slide to illustrate the scale of opportunity with RPA and Excel. Uh, from many back office processes across industries and you know, different lines of business, there really are opportunities everywhere within your organization. And as you begin to automate some of these processes and take that first step towards building out a culture of automation, you'll really realize the value that RPA can bring then. And uh, we will be sending out the recording, uh, the, the link to the recording as Logan stated earlier on. So you'll have access to the slide again. Um, yep. So with that, uh, Logan, I'll hand it back over to you. Um, and thank you again for everyone's time. Uh, hopefully you're, you were able to learn something new. Thank you, Nav. RPA really is an incredible tool. Seeing it work is just wild. Um, that brings us to our question, question period. If you have any questions, please enter them in the chat. I see we have a couple here. Um, this one's right here for you, Nav. Let's have you keep keep going. It says, uh, what if I have multiple spreadsheets because each requires a different set of inputs and a different calculation? How would something like that be handled? So, yeah. so that one's actually for Lori. I think I thought it was for RPA, but it's actually how how would that be handled in an app? Multiple spreadsheets with multiple, yeah, multiple different inputs yeah, and calculations. Multiple spreadsheets because each requires a different set of inputs and different calculation. How would something like that be handled in an app? Perfect. So let me answer this in a couple ways, just because I don't know what the multiple different spreadsheets are trying to accomplish. But essentially, if you have, let, let's say you have multiple spreadsheets because you have a variety of products or services, and those are each requiring a different calculation. I could imagine a screen where when you go and add a new quote or recipe or whatever it is you're managing with that spreadsheet, that you can select a type. And then in the back end, based on that type, it's associated with different specific set of inputs or calculations. Or another possibility, if, if the unique calculation is, is based on a different role or a different person at your organization, maybe back to Nav's point about sales reps and they have maybe a different compensation um, structure, um, this an application could, could be 
focused based on who that user is or what role they're in. One thing that's really nice about applications versus spreadsheets is we know who you are, you've logged in. And so we can assign you to a role and you can have a customized experience based on the, the user that you, you are within the system. And that could be different views within dashboards, that could be different calculations, different inputs, things like that. I could also see um, a possible third solution. So we've built, um, included in some software that we've built is the ability to, for an admin to manage different aspects of the application. So an admin to be able to go in and add or edit um, different calculations, um, add or edit the cost of raw materials or the percentage of profit margin or um, you know some, some other different configurations. So essentially, the, the, the quick answer is an application can, can support many different inputs, many different calculations, many different experiences. Um, and we need to dive in a little deeper to understand how you're using multiple spreadsheets and be able to point you in one of those directions that, that potentially gives you a, a good solution. Awesome. Hopefully that answers that question. Please let us know if it didn't or if we were talking about something else. We do have one question for Nav, which is, um, can you explain a more complex RPA use case or give an example? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, the, the example that I shared regarding the customer information with those interns, that was a pretty simple um, example. Another example I can think of, uh, we, so a few years ago, we had a manufacturing client in the aviation industry where they had a process where uh, a handful, I think it was three uh, processors were emailed uh, daily financial reports uh, from you know, the upstream process. So they were emailed these reports to a dedicated inbox and these reports were Excel. And what they had to do was they had to uh, open up those reports. They had to uh, add some additional columns and then they had to validate the data uh, across another spreadsheet, which they had to also manipulate. And once the data matched up between those two spreadsheets, each of which involved um, some manual processing, they had to build out a, um, a third kind of Excel template. And in that template, they took data from each of those uh, two spreadsheets that I first talked about and uh, built that template out using that data and then had to upload it into a third party portal. I forget uh, what application that they uploaded it into. But once they sent out, uh, once they uploaded that report, they had to send an email for further downstream processing. So you can see, even though this process, obviously it had a lot of manual Excel functionality, it also dealt with Excel spreadsheets being integrated with Outlook, for instance, and this third party portal. So this is an example where you know, you're, you're working with the Excel files, but not necessarily in them, but then you're also working in them. But that is an example of a process that can be automated uh, end to end, right? So uh, I think it's key to think of the potential of automation anywhere in RPA as not only what can it do in Excel, but what can it do uh, with the Excel files, both on the upstream and downstream uh, integrations of a particular process. So hopefully that helps answer your question. Uh, if you guys have any additional questions, um, feel free to email me as well. I think that information will be on this presentation. Great. Yeah, it's uh, definitely one of the pain points of Excel is getting it to talk to other things. So RPA is a nice bridge for that, which is really cool. Um, here is, that's the end of our uh, you know, Q&A time. If you have any other questions, um, please feel free to email us. Um, here's, you can contact Lori and Nav directly here. Uh, you can also email us um, at hello at mutuallyhuman.com. And just a reminder that you'll be getting a recording of this tomorrow, and please feel free to send it to anyone you think might find it valuable. Also reach out to us if you have any uh, additional questions or anything, and please fill out the survey that will pop up right here at the end. Um, and it will also be in the email. So thank you for thank you for spending some time with us. Uh, we hope you found this valuable, and we hope to talk to you soon. Thank you. Have a good day.